And as a general question, when it comes to happiness, how much of it is from genetics, what we're mm-hmm. born with versus, you know, the, we talked about some tactics earlier to, to catalyze getting the ball rolling and, and feeling happier. But how much of that is genetic and how much room do we have to play around that, that pivot point? Yeah, no, that's a, that's an important question. And, you know, it has also to do with uh, our expectations, you know, having uh, true rather than false expectations. Uh, genetics matter and uh, genetics matter uh, uh, a great deal. On average, uh, 50% of our happiness levels um, are determined by genes or very early experiences. Um, In other words, things that we have zero control over. On average, 10% of our happiness levels are determined by external circumstances where we live, where we're from, uh, what we have, what we don't have. And uh, 40% on average is determined by our choices. Now, I emphasized on average. Here's why. Let's take external circumstances. 10% on average. However, you can be sure that a person who lives in dire poverty, that affects those external circumstances, affect their happiness much more than 10%. Or you can be sure that a person who lives in a war zone, external circumstances matter much more than 10%. Or a woman who lives in a place where women are oppressed, second-class citizens, you can be sure that external circumstances matter more than 10%. But on average, if basic needs are met, if basic freedoms are respected, it's only 10%. The same idea applies to the other elements. Sometimes people are born with um, genes that are um, that make them extremely susceptible to depression or anxiety, and then genes matter more than fifty percent. Or sometimes they are born with wonderful genes and and you know Pollyannish genes where they see the positive in everything. And we know such people. Then you know, good for them. Genes affect more than fifty percent. Similarly with choices. And the question is, how can we increase that 40% average? How can we have more impact on our happiness levels based on our, uh, our choices? And the answer here lies in becoming more mindful, aware of the choices that we have. Let me give you um, an, an, an example. So Many of the choices that we have in life are what I've come to call rhetorical choices. Rhetorical choices, just like uh, rhetorical questions, are one where the the choice is obvious. You know, if if I say to to my child, you know, do you want daddy to be upset with you? You know, it's a no brainer. Yeah, it's a rhetorical question. Of course, I don't. Um, Similarly, there are rhetorical choices day in and day out in our life. For example, if I ask you, Jesse, Do you want to take the uh, good things in your life for granted? Or do you want to appreciate the good things in your life, whether it's people or things? Definitely want to appreciate and have gratitude. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's a rhetorical choice. Who, Who would tell you otherwise? And yet, and this is the important point, and yet, most people, most of the time, take the good things in their lives for granted. In other words, we have a rhetorical choice in front of us and we make the wrong choice. Why? Because we're not aware, we're not mindful of the fact that we have that choice at this particular moment. Similarly, you know, do you want to sit down crouch or do you want to sit up straight when when you know that that affects your mood? Well, of course I want to sit up straight. And yet so many people, so much of the time, choose inadvertently to sit this way affecting their well-being. We need to be mindful. We need to be reminded of the choices that we have, quite literally, at every moment in our life. And when we're reminded of these rhetorical choices, that's when that 40% can become 50 or 70% in terms of affecting our happiness. And this is why the interventions within the, the field of happiness studies are so important. This is why, for example, we we need to create a ritual, a daily ritual, where we express gratitude. 
rather than take for granted. Even though we all know that it's important today. But yes, doing what Oprah told us to do, keeping that gratitude journal before going to bed, writing it down. Or we have rituals around exercise, reminding us to exercise regularly, not just exercising when we feel like it, but doing it literally, religiously, as a ritual. Well, this is why um, we have, uh, you know, rituals around, uh, around learning or reminders around appreciation. You know, I, I often recommend managers, leaders in organizations to walk around with a bracelet. The bracelet as a reminder for doing something that they think is important for them to do as a manager and as a leader. For example, give compliments, appreciate others. Have a reminder. It's a rhetorical choice that people want to be appreciated, need to be appreciated, and that it feels good to appreciate. And yet, most people, most of the time, don't do it, or at least don't do it enough. So having reminders so that we raise our levels of awareness, so that we become more mindful of the kind of life that we want to live, of the kind of person that we want to be. This is important for having our choices affect our ha happiness in, in a more significant, deep way.